Google just released its AI agent development kit. In this video, we're going to explore together and build our first AI agent with it. So I'm here at their official documentation page and you see we got a quick start tutorial here. So let's click on that to get started quickly. And the first step here is to create a Python virtual environment. So before that, let's start by actually creating our uh, project directory for this project. I'm going to be using cursor. You can use Visual Studio Code and another IDE, or you can also just go with the terminal and a text editor, but I'm going to be using cursor. So I'm going to open up cursor here. And, uh, or before that, let's go and create our project directory. So I'm going to go over to my desktop and click on create folder here. And I'm going to call this something. I'm just going to call my ADK project and then go back to cursor and open up this here, my desktop. I'm going to select the project folder I just created. Right. So now we got our project folder here created. Let's go back. To the instructions and now the next step is to create a virtual environment inside of our directory that will manage the dependencies for this project so we can copy this part here go back to cursor and open up a terminal and we can confirm here that it's opened up inside of this project adk project so paste this in here to command execute it and it should now create a virtual environment for us and you can see here on the left side that it created a dot bnb directory which is our virtual environment directory okay great let's go back and now we're going to activate the virtual environment so depending on which platform you're on there are literate ways here i'm on linux so i'm gonna choose the linux command go back here paste that in execute it and you can see now here this part indicates that the virtual environment is activated Okay, now we got to install the ADK. So let's copy this command here. Go back and paste it in. And should now install the agent development kit. And since we have activated our virtual environment, this will be installed inside our virtual environment here and will not affect the rest of our system. Okay, so now the agent development kit has been installed and it's now time to create the project structure that it shows you here. So parent folder here refers to this folder, the ADK project that we just created. And this is the structure here we're going to create. So we're going to start by creating another folder inside of that. We're going to call that multi-tool agent. So you can do that by all other instructions here. Just copy this command. And inside here, just paste that in. Like so. And you see now we got a directory created here. You could also just have right clicked and created that directory as well. Let's go back here. Now there's three files we need here. We need this init file, agent file, and a .env file. So let's create those three. Copy that. Go back in here. And inside of this directory, we're going to create the file. I'm going to paste in the name. Like so. We're also going to create the agent.py file and a .env file. .env. All right. So now we have the whole structure in place. The next step now is to start filling in the files with information. So there is a command that will add this import statement to the init file instead of running this command you can also just copy this import statement and go to your init file and just paste it in so manually now going back here let's see in the next step is to fill in the code for the agent and that's the code down here so we can click on this button here to copy all of that code go back and paste that in to the agent.py and now the last step is to set up our environment or our env file with our credentials for using the gemini api so uh let's go down here and see scroll down and yeah so you can be using the google ai studio platform or the vertex ai platform the margin one is google ai studio i think that's the recommended one as well that's what we're going to be using here 
So for that, we're going to copy this part here. And we're going to go over, open up our .env file. I'm going to paste that in here. And we're going to replace this with our API key for our Gemini model. Let's go back out and go over to Google AI Studio. And here we're gonna create a new API key. Go over to this button, click on get API key. And here we're gonna click on this button, create API key. And here we're gonna have to select a project or create one if we don't have one. So I'm just gonna select this project I have here and click on create API key in this project. It's now generating the API key. Okay, so we got the API key here. Let's copy it. Let's go back to cursor and here we're gonna just paste that in like so and now let's keep following the tutorial here and you see that there's three ways you can interact with your agent so one is using the web ui which is this it would give us a graphical interface for chatting with our agent and this is what we're going to be following here. If you would like, you can also run it via the terminal or you can run it as an API as well. But we're going to go with the web UI. And to open it up, it's very simple. We do just execute this command. Let's go back to cursor. And inside of here, we're just going to execute that command. Paste that in here. And we'll now start up the web UI that we can access from our browser. And you can see now that... It says here that it is now running on port 8000. So let's go back to the browser, open up a new tab, and here we can pike in localhost 8000, and we should be able to access the AI development kit web UI. And you see here it says, Welcome to ADK. We have now accessed the web UI. Cool. At the top left here, you can select all your available agents. We only have one, which is the model tool agent. So let's select that. And you see here, here's the session ID. And I don't know what this is creating evaluation. I haven't tried this yet. I don't know what that is. Anyway, here you have your uh, chat, uh, chat buff for chatty with the AI. So let's start by typing a message and see if it works. Let's just say hello. And you see, we got a reply. Hello, how can I help you today? I can provide with current weather or tied in a specific city. So why did it say this? I can provide you with current weather or time in a specific city. If you go back to cursor, you will see that we have currently only two tools available. And in Python here, they have made it so in the code here that each tool is defined by one function. So one function equals one tool, right? And each function has a description of the tool. They had arguments, return values, and then the actual code, what the tool will do. And we have two tools here. So one is to get weather, and one is to get current time. And that's from where uh, the AI knew how to respond, and why it responded that way, because it has these two tools that has been defined for it. And if we go back down to the bottom here, you see also the actual agent definition here. And it has, it's called weather time agent. It, you can see the model it uses and the script report agent. Agent to answer questions about time and weather in the city and instructions, and then the tools available. So, the got the get weather tool and the get current time tool. So, let's try and ask it for the time, for example. What's the time? What's the time? Could you please specify which city you're interested in? Let's say, uh, I don't know, Paris. So, now it uh, executes the get current time tool. Uh, if you click on events here, you see the steps it took, you see the questions and the function and call to get current time, response, etc. And we get this response message here says, I am sorry, I don't have time zone information for Paris. I cannot get the current time. So why is that? Well, it's not using an API to get the time zone from any place in the world. Instead, it just has a very simple code here. And you can see that it only gets you the time for New York. So if you have the parameters New York, so if you mention New York in your message, it will respond 
correctly with this information here. It will generate a date time for now. And there with this zone info, and that is for America and New York. And then it will generate a pound and respond with this message. Otherwise, it will just tell you, sorry, I don't have uh, time zone information for the city, which is the city that you mentioned. But that's why it, it couldn't respond. But you can, of course, change this any way you want here. And the same is the get weather data, just also static stream to all, all, always respond with the weather in New York is sunny. If you mention New York, if you mention anything else, it will just give you an error. So it's a very simple agent here, doesn't do much. Uh, also here in the interface, if you click on one of these, you see we get this window here where you can see the event, you can see the request that was made, and you can also see the response that we received. And here is one interesting thing that they give you this uh, visual picture here of what happened. So the weather well, time agent called the get current time tool and they show you that here. So that's that's really nice. And here you can see uh, the function called. You can see the argument that was sent in because I mentioned Paris. It sent in Paris as an argument and the tool that was called. And when you send in Paris as an argument to the get current time tool, you see that it will not be equal to New York. And for that reason, it will throw an, er throw an error here. So it's not going to work. And uh, yeah, the author with the time agents, that's the agent, I guess, here. That's called. And then you see some other information here, ID, etc. So the, this is like the basics, I guess. Uh, I think it's interesting. There's an interesting framework. I'm going to explore this a lot more. See if I can build something nice with it. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think this looks interesting? Do you think it's going to have potential? Uh, please let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section. If you'd like to see more videos on this uh, framework, please let me know about that as well. And yeah, that's it for me for this video. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.